This is In The Loop, I'm Christian Bryant. Starting a family is expensive for anyone, but there's an added expense in the mix for people using non-traditional methods. The high costs of these methods have led some companies to start offering fertility benefits as part of broader health insurance coverage. These benefits help cover things like in vitro fertilization or IVF, which is when a fertilized egg is implanted into the uterus. Intrauterine insemination or IUI, a type of artificial insemination, and sometimes they cover egg freezing and other treatments. Remember those because we're gonna come back to them a bit later. A survey from Mercer found that in 2020, 42% of large companies with 20,000 or more employees covered IVF, which is up from 36% in 2015. Walmart is one of the most recent major companies to offer fertility benefits. In September, the company announced that employees who use their medical plan will get financial assistance for IVF, IUI, and genetic testing, among other things. Employees will also get up to $20,000 for surrogacy or adoption. Facebook and Apple paved the way. They both started offering fertility benefits in 2014. Today, companies like JP Morgan, Microsoft, and Unilever have joined the bandwagon as well. But a lot of companies still do not offer these benefits. And for many working folks, those benefits are hard to come by. Experts say a big reason for this push for companies offering fertility benefits could be the so-called great resignation. These benefits offer a way for employers to attract new employees and keep the ones they already have. As of June of this year, 20 states have passed fertility insurance coverage laws, and 14 of those states include coverage for IVF. But even if you have insurance coverage, Typically, only a small amount of the total cost is covered. We sat down with Betsy Campbell from Resolve, the National Infertility Association. She explains how families navigate these costs. We see a lot of people that go into credit card debt or they're taking out uh, loans on their homes or they're having to sell their homes and move in with their parents and perhaps uh, saddest of all is that they're abandoning their hopes of becoming parents because they can't afford it. There are a few different routes people can go when deciding how they want to start their family, and they can be pretty expensive. Let's take IVF for example. According to the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, the median price for a single cycle of IVF costs more than $19,000 which can be up to 50% of an average person's yearly disposable income. There's also IUI, which could cost up to $2,000 per cycle, according to the Society of Assisted Reproductive Technology. This type of procedure can be done for a few different reasons. If someone wants to use their partner's sperm, IUI can help increase chances of pregnancy. IUI is also commonly used by those who use donor sperm. We should note, this isn't the only fertility treatment that uses donor sperm, and the cost of the sperm is an additional expense. There are a few major sperm banks in the US, one of them being the Seattle Sperm Bank. We spoke with their general supervisor, Angelo Allard, who says the cost of their sperm is going up from $790 per vial in 2019 to $950 today. This is due to a few factors, including supply and demand, inflation and market rates. With that in mind, you can see how the costs can quickly add up. What I would tell somebody who is asking you know, those kind of inquiries as far as how many vials do we need if we want to have two to three kid, children? And I would say at age 32 and a half or younger, what this, the general statistics show us is that it's five vials per birth. Some people have even gone outside of sperm banks to cut costs and find donors on apps or Facebook groups, but that comes with risks. These people who are utilizing non-regulated sperm bank routes, you know, I, I would tell them that there's so much more that goes into sperm donor screening and testing and verifying and confirming and distribution and regulating and tracking that they, no matter how much research you do, unless you're in the industry, you, ne you wouldn't necessarily even think about some of the questions that you should be thinking about. There's egg donation too, which can be used in certain fertility treatments. That can cost around a few thousand dollars per egg before any extra costs. Adoption is another option that can cost upwards of $50,000 per child. Whether you choose to adopt domestically or internationally, 
there are different costs associated with those paths. One organization, Help Us Adopt, helps provide grants to people looking to adopt. Founder Becky Fawcett said she started this company when she realized how much discrimination there is in the adoption industry. We give money away four times a year. Right now, we give a million dollars away a year, which is great, and a lot of opportunity for people. And as I said, we give grants up to $20,000. Becky says many families have already spent a lot of money on rounds of IVF before looking into adoption. She has firsthand experience with this. I tried the IVF route and I did five rounds of IVF. Um, none of it was covered by insurance. It was $82,000, which was awful, um, especially to end up where we ended up, which was three pregnancies and then three miscarriages out of the five rounds. And um, we stopped with the IVF for many reasons, but I mean, to be fair, one of the main reasons we stopped was that we had $40,000 left in our savings account. That was it. And we knew that was the cost of adoption. This was, I mean, my oldest daughter is about to be 17. So this was a while ago. And uh, that's exactly what it took every penny out of that savings account to bring her home. Surrogacy, which is when a person who is not the baby's parent carries the child, is an alternative that can cost up to $150,000. There are fees to consider like medical and legal expenses, medications, maternity clothes, and travel. All these treatments we just discussed are often used by people experiencing infertility or families with LGBTQ parents. The CDC says among heterosexual women with no prior births, one in five struggle with infertility. And in 2019, a survey from Family Equality found that 63% of LGBTQ millennials are considering expanding their families by becoming parents for the first time or having more kids. But infertility advocates say if your job doesn't offer fertility benefits, you do have the power to push for them. I think it's important for uh, employees to know that they have the power to change their health benefits. Um, we know one of the primary reasons why employers add coverage is because employees requested it. And so Resolve does have free toolkits to help employees make the ask and, um, you know, to support those people along the way. 